Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and we are back with the 6.5 Podcast, an insider edition. We are talking semiconductors. We are talking CXL, and I am joined here by my incredible co-host, Daniel Newman. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, man. Good to be back. Love these insider editions. Always love talking chips. Pat, didn't we say at one time that while all the other pundits were saying software will eat the world, what did we say? We pretty much said uh, semiconductors eat the world. What are you going to do? Run software on air, right? Absolutely. It was kind of our, uh, was kind of our uh, snark, snarky approach at it, but we proved the naysayers wrong, and every analyst loves to do a good victory lap when they get it right like this. And we've gotten our fair share of these right about semiconductors, so I'm pretty happy about that. But hey, enough about us. Let's introduce our guest, Ryan Baxter from Micron. Ryan, how are you doing? Great to see you. Hey, great to see you guys again. Uh, doing doing really well. It's uh, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> yeah, it really is, and it's been great uh, cr- uh, getting to know you over the past uh, a couple years, uh, mm-hmm. and just kind of digging in and on memory and and CXL. I love CXL. You know, I love CXL. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> hey, hey, Pat. Yes. Do you love CXL? I love CXL. Yes. You know, you know what, what it stands for? One more time. I'm not going to believe you. I'm yeah. Not believe you. <laughs> As I always like to say to my kids, who are you trying to convince, me or yourself? <laughs> uh, no, listen, you know that Pat and I, we love talking semis and we love talking technologies yeah. that, you know, that can make applications, make, you know, whether it's more power or more efficient, we love it. Let's start there. Let's start, first of all, you know, we did a, we, we, we've had a conversation recently about HBM. Mm-hmm. And now we're talking about CXL and the industry loves acronyms, but we also have to assume that because we have a pretty big audience of CEOs all the way to the most technical people in any organization. Yeah, we right. like to make sure that the, the the vernacular is clear. So give us the quick, what is CXL? And give us a, then a bit of an update on the status. Of course, uh, CXL stands for Compute Express Link. This is uh, a brand new interface uh, primarily used in servers um, that is high speed and low latency and uh, really enables uh, some interesting new use cases that typically were were either impossible or very difficult to enable with, um, you know, call it closed interfaces. This, by the way, is is an interface that's broadly embraced and standard. Uh, So so this, uh, this is actually you know, can be monetized by the masses and and we're really excited about what it could mean for, um, you know, for server, for future server architectures. And, you know, it's really right around the corner. Yeah. Can you provide kind of an update on the status of CXL? Kind of where, where are we on this map? You know, sure. the, there's different flavors, there are different su- sub flavors out there, but listen, <laughs> That's just part of, of establishing industry standard. I mean, we saw this with USB. We saw saw this with PCIe. So this yeah. is par for the course. Where are we on the map right now? Yeah. Well, as you know, with any of those uh, new interfaces, it's not just about the hardware. It's it's really about the ecosystem. And so, you know, the ecosystem's really embracing CXL, and that uh, that goes all the way from you know the the CPU vendors. You know, to the ASIC vendors that are developing, you know, specialized silicon to, the, to essentially interface with uh, with Compute Express Link, software vendors, uh, and even customers. You know, we we've got to think differently, and CXL enables us to do that. Um, we've got now multiple ASIC vendors actually sampling silicon today, believe it or not. And so uh, this silicon combined with DRAM can enable you know, memory uh, bandwidth expansion as well as capacity expansion. And for the first time, <laughs> we're actually able to, to actually test what we, what we conjectured uh, through simulation, uh, you know, perhaps a year ago, we're actually able to actually measure in silicon today. And, and we're actually seeing some very, very compelling uh, results and, and value driven uh, by CXL. Of course, we, we saw the next uh, version of the CXL 3.0 specification published late last year. Uh, of course, that enables uh, even higher speed uh, in the way of PCIe Gen 6, as well as um, you know, fabric-attached uh, types of uh, topologies that, uh, that people might, might imagine uh, exist in a, in a server, in a highly connected uh, you know, fabric-based server. Finally, uh, I would say that the standards uh, are coming along extraordinarily well. Um, of course, 
you, you know, you can have the best uh, whiz bang technology, but if, if it's uh, proprietary and, and single source, right. it's not going to be widely adopted. So the CXL consortium as well as JEDEC has been hard at work to, to enable certain aspects of standardization, which I think can, can really help to, to, you know, break this market open and, and be able to, to enable it for the masses. So that's uh, in, in a nutshell, what's, uh, what's happening with CXL. All right. So love to hear the background ecosystems, always important. That's just really how this whole industry works, but use cases matter. Yeah. How are people putting this to use? You know, give us kind of the early use cases that you're seeing that are, you know, benefiting from CXL technology. Yeah. Uh, good, good question. Uh, we are, we have been looking at the use case of, uh, of primarily memory capacity expansion. And this, this really uh, shows up in the way of customers wanting to use a whole lot more, you know, memory in a cost effective way than typically what it's, what a non CXL enabled server can support. Now there's ways around that, but they are very costly. Um, they, uh, these are, methods that use a technology called through silicon vias which are very interesting but uh but are, are pretty tough to scale in terms of cost and what what cxl provides is a is a nice pressure release valve uh in the way of a of a significant tco benefit to get that memory capacity expansion not in the the main memory footprint of a server but rather you know sitting alongside that main memory footprint and that's uh that's off of that cxl bus so you know you can think of um you know, very, very large in-memory database types of applications that can benefit from that, um, from that larger, um, more cost-effective uh, memory footprint. Of course, um, bandwidth expansion, uh, you know, CXL, a single, you know, by channel of, of CXL provides roughly the same amount of memory bandwidth as a, as a single DDR5 channel. So, Obviously, for bandwidth, uh, you know, starved applications, that becomes extremely interesting. And then the capacity expansion is just, uh, you know, icing on the cake from that perspective. Um, we are also seeing, uh, you know, this this concept of uh, again, it, it's connected to the first thing I, I talked about, but this TSV mitigation, um, you know, really providing a much more cost-effective way to add a whole lot more capacity to, say, a cluster of servers, and uh, and that can be in the form of, you know, say, adding memory footprint for a single CPU. It could also be in the form of adding, adding say, a pool of memory so that multiple CPUs can access uh, that pool of memory. That becomes, you know, very important when you're thinking about, um, you know, applications that are increasingly hungry for, for additional high performance capacity. Now, you can always use you know other tiers of the of the memory storage hierarchy, but of course you're paying a performance penalty by uh, by heading out to an SSD for your data. So so CXL really does um, you know provide that high performance uh, use case um, you know shot in the arm, if you will, uh, to, to to some of the more interesting uh, you know applications. Uh, I want to do the double click inside a topic that Dan and I can't go an hour. Uh, without uh, uh, discussing, and and those are things like um, natural language models, yeah. uh, like ChatGPT. Um, I mean, it is it is amazing uh, all all of the talk, and this th this one's real, right? Yeah. This this one's real, and believe that uh, it's going to uh, last a long time to provide incredible amount of benefit to consumers and businesses, but. Uh, hardware players need to step up and and support it in more efficient ways right I mean, it takes 10x the amount of resources to to train a model and it takes a lot more resources to infer uh, one of these these models how does cxl uh, intersect uh with this how does it how does it benefit in in making either you know blasting out more performance or doing it a lot more efficiently at lower at a lower power right yeah, it's a it's a great question. It's uh, kind of top of mind for a lot of folks these days. Um, yeah, you know, I think uh, ultimately what CXL enables in this space is is optionality. You know, you don't you don't have to bring a sledgehammer to the to the job anymore. You can pick your tool um, to to bring that. You know, uh, to to you know things like generative AI and large language models. And so, you know, what CXL provides is is kind of that you know flexibility. Um, it's flexibility in the form of enabling things like um, switches and fabrics uh, to, um, you know, to really leverage uh, data flow, efficient data flow and efficient connection of compute elements 
uh, across fabrics rather than you know sort of pushing everything to a single spot in the data center. You might be able to imagine a situation where with CXL enabled fabrics, you can you can you know solve that same problem in a much more distributed, probably more power efficient way. Um, you know, it also provides a significantly better scale when it comes to uh, housing some of those large language models. Um, they're large and and getting larger. Um, these are models that um, you know have billions, if not you know hundreds of billions of parameters, and growing over time. Some of the more interesting problems um, no longer fit inside uh, the memory footprint. Of a, of a standard server. So being able to uh, to leverage CXL for that additional capacity expansion that you need for to house that, that model, as I said, a very high performance, um, low latency media is, uh, is gonna be critical, uh, I think, and, and really um, able to, to, to sort of break open the, uh, you know, th the democratization of AI and, and, um, and really you know, allow system de designers, architectures, um, quite a bit more flexibility to think about how, how else to solve this problem um, other than the traditional, uh, traditional ways we've been able to do it th thus far. So Ryan, uh, you know, just quick follow up on that because I like talking about large language models a lot. Um, do you think this could be sort of the breakout technology? Because you know, I've talked to a lot of press. I've, I've, you know, been asked about CXL a lot, and you know, it's like it kind of caught on, then it kind of went away. You know, and I'm not saying it never went away for you, I'm sure, but you know, you yeah. look at kind of how <laughs> it gets hot in the as, yeah. as a stage topic at tech events. You know, but with all the on, you know, all the onset of this AI stuff, are we going to? Do you think this is going to be maybe what really puts CXL back into the, into the limelight again? Yeah, that could could very well be. Um, you know, it, it again, it offers um, some really interesting capability that um, you know that that really is is desperately needed. Um, prior to to even some of the the buzz around generative AI. Uh, I think this could even, you know, again, be be kind of that shot of adrenaline to to be able to accelerate uh, the potential to, um, you know, to, to to solve new problems much much faster than you other, otherwise would have been able to do. Again, this is an open consortium, a, a group of companies that have embraced uh, this this technology and can innovate, um, you know, at at their own pace. Um, and uh, and I think the the collection of of that innovation across the entire ecosystem is uh, is really what's going to accelerate exactly what you just said. It's um, you know providing a lot more um, benefit to a lot a uh, lot more corners of the community um, to uh, to enable you know folks to solve all sorts of problems, including generative AI problems. Ryan, we started the conversation uh, by asking the question, kind of like, okay, what is it, and where are we on this map, mm -hmm. right? And you know, for for I guess everybody would want to argue this. Uh, there are essentially uh, three specifications that are out there, right? One, yeah. two, and three, and then there's some some different adders uh, on top of that. Um, some optionality. Yeah. Uh, where? What is the next big step that people need to be ready for? What should they be ready for upcoming? And I'll leave it up to you. Whether it's six months, sure. year, three months. Yeah, uh, good, uh, great question. Uh, I think the next, there's been a lot of work around the specifications, a lot of work um, trying to uh, understand um, aspects of a value proposition that CXL can bring to the table. Um, I think the next big thing is to, is to actually see this in, in silicon and in volume yeah. silicon um, at scale. Um, you know, what it could mean uh, to, to an entire data center, for instance, uh, in terms of, um, you know, uh, efficient data movement, uh, adding you know significant capability and um and and really driving you know additional sustainability uh that uh, that needs to happen in this industry i, I think that's you know and that's going to happen really over the next say 12 to 18 months um it's uh it, it's it's very exciting to you know to see um this uh this transpire and of course you know thinking about the next uh generation or the next specification version doesn't stop right that that happens in parallel and so it's um it's about you know, kind of watching the industry leapfrog itself uh, in terms of, um, you know, in terms of what's next. And so, so silicon at scale, I think is the next, uh, you know, next, next thing to watch. And then, you know, after that, um, you know, sharing, pooling uh, becomes extremely interesting uh, in the CXL 3.0 timeframe. Um, so, uh, so yeah, strap in, it's, uh, it's going to be a fun ride. 
I love strapping in. Any ride in the semiconductors uh, space gets me excited. More fast cars, rocket ships, roller coasters. So you you, you got me excited. So look, um, you know, as we come to time here, you know, any other kind of broader thoughts, observations around the CXL space that you want to share with our audience? Yeah, um, you know, I said it. I said it at the uh, front of the talk. I guess uh, CXL is real. Um, this is not something that's uh, that's three, four, five years away anymore. This is. Uh, you know, we're actually uh, looking at actual silicon and, and seeing uh, benefit from actual use cases. So, number one, uh, number two, I would say there's broad excitement. Um, of course, uh, you know, things kind of come and go as, as far as, um, it, you know, what people get excited about. But but CXL is being designed in everywhere. And it's it's uh, it's interesting. And and um, and, and what it enables um, is is very, very valuable in terms of TCO and performance uh, and, and, you know, memory capacity. Uh, expansion benefits. Finally, um, you know, I think CXL uh, provides or, or enables a significant expansion of, you know, new innovation, new new ways to to do, you know, or to solve, um, you know, either old problems or brand new problems that were never able to solve be solved uh, with traditional architecture. So, the industry is actually going to have to make um, some. Some pretty uh, pretty interesting uh, decisions because um, we probably can't do everything, right? We have to we have to focus uh, and uh, and really drive um, the best uh, bang for the buck when it comes to you know the benefit for the entire community. So, um, just a few closing thoughts. Uh, I think uh, that's you know CXL is is real and it's it's coming. So um, so I said get get ready for it. <laughs> it's exciting stuff. I love talking CXL. And I know, you know, I mean, this is going to be one of the big, uh, the big drivers of data center rearchitecture. I know there's a lot of benefits between uh, now and then. That is the talk when I talk to the hyperscalers about next generation architectures. And, you know, of course, there's the the discussions, the gnawing of teeth, you know, gnashing of teeth that that, that you would expect. But but I mean, that's the case with any major tectonic shift uh, right. out there. I'm really excited about it. Uh, Ryan, great to see you, buddy. Let's Thanks. do this again. We'll do. Take care, guys. Have All a great right. day. Thanks, Ryan. All right, everybody. There you have it. Great 6.5 Insider here today. Talking CXL, memory, large language models, chat GPT. We fit that in. It's in every pod now. What the heck? <laughs> but, uh, Hit that subscribe button. Join us for all the episodes here of the 6.5, our weekly show, our insider editions, our summit, whichever thing it is, the 6.5, we're always here. We've always got you when it comes to the most important conversations in the tech space. But for this episode, for Patrick Moorhead and myself, it's time to say goodbye. We'll see you all later.